In order to calculate value at risk in Excel, we need daily price data. And what I have here is two ETFs. One is SPY, so the S&P 500 uh, ETF. This is the largest S&P 500 ETF. This will make up the equity stock part of our portfolio. And then over here in column F, I've got the closing prices for BND, which is the Vanguard Total Bond Index ETF. And I've got price data, the closing prices for the whole previous year. And then from there in columns D and G, I just took the daily returns by taking the, you know, um, the next day's price and subtracting the previous day's price and dividing by the previous day's price. And I just did that for both of them. So now we need to give an expected return for the S&P 500 index, which if you look historically, it's been about 7%. So we'll just say 7%. And then we need to find standard deviation. So we'll use the inbuilt Excel formula, uh, standard dev.s. And we're just going to go back over here and we're going to grab all of the daily returns for the previous year. And this gives us the daily standard deviation of the returns for the S&P 500 index. But what we want is actually the annualized standard deviation. So we're just going to multiply this value by the number of trading days in a year, 252. Um, to the uh, exponent of 0.5, so we're taking the square root of 252. And that gives us the annual standard deviation. For the total bond market index, we can say 2% uh, is our expected return, probably a decent estimate. And then we're gonna do the same thing to find the standard deviation, so equal standard of S, and that the S just stands for sample. And we're gonna grab all of the returns in column G. And so I'm just doing control shift down on my keyboard to do that automatically. And then again, we're just going to multiply by the square root of 252 to get the annualized standard deviation. So there we go. And now we want to find the covariance of the S&P 500 index and the total bond market. So we'll use an inbuilt Excel formula for this as well. So equals covariance dot S. And then we're going to grab the array from column D. And then, so comma, and then we'll grab the array from column G as well. And then we're going to multiply. So, so if we just leave it at that, that's our covariance of the daily returns. But we want to multiply it by 252 to get our covariance of the, uh, the annual covariance of the returns. Okay, so now we need to say what our portfolio value is. So let's just say $100,000. And let's give a weight to the S&P 500 index. So we'll say 60% of our portfolio is in the stock market. And then um, one minus 60% one minus will be in the bond market, which is 40%. Now we need to calculate portfolio variance, which for a two asset portfolio, this is the formula for how to calculate the um, portfolio variance. So we'll do equals the weight of one squared times um, the the uh, standard deviation of that one. Oh, this will be one squared. Oh, sorry, this should be here. And then we'll add the weight of two squared multiplied by standard deviation squared. And so um, the standard deviation squared is just the variance. And then we'll do two times the weight of one times the weight of two times the covariance, which we calculated over here. And that gives us the portfolio standard or the portfolio variance. To get to the portfolio standard deviation, we just need to take the square root of portfolio variance, which we can just put it to the exponent 0.5 to do that. And so this gives us our portfolio standard deviation. And finally, we've gotten to what you're all waiting for is how to calculate VAR. In order to do that, we need to specify a time interval, and we'll do that in a number of days. And let's just say, for example, uh, 20 days. We want to know our value at risk for a period of 20 days. We need to calculate our expected return over that period. We'll just be equal to the portfolio value multiplied by the percentage expected return of the SPY times the weight of SPY plus the percentage expected return of the total bond market index multiplied by the weight of the total bond market index. And then once we have all that, we can multiply that by the um, number of trading days uh, in our period divided by the total trading days in the year. So that gives us the percentage of the year that we're looking at at the end there. 
So we find that our expected return for that period of time is 397. And we also need a z-score. So with the Monte Carlo simulation, we're actually going to come up with about 10,000 different simulations. You can see I've mapped all that out down here. And so we're just going to grab random z-scores for each scenario uh, and assuming a normal distribution. So to do that, we'll say equals norm dot i n or norm dot s dot i n v and then so this grabs us a uh a random z score or or a z score and we need to put in rand function to make it a normally random distribution so you'll see it when i hit f9 on my keyboard i just keep recalculating a different random z score based on a uh, normal random distribution and then we'll have to calculate our scenario var based on this z-score right here. And I put the formula for var down here, which we'll say is equal to the expected return minus the portfolio value multiplied by the portfolio standard deviation multiplied by the z-score and then multiplied by the number of days in the period divided by 252 trading days and then we put it to the exponent of 0.5 because we need to take the square root of that time period. Okay, so now what we have here really is the scenario var based on this z-score. And we can just go ahead and use our put our seed value in here equal to this scenario var. But now we need to do the true Monte Carlo simulation, which is the 10,000 simulations. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to grab this whole table. I just did control shift down on my keyboard. And then I'm going to go to data, what if analysis, and then data table. And then all I'm going to do is take this col column input cell and just select a random um, blank cell. So we're tricking this into performing these 10,000 scenarios for us. So what you can see here is that we've done 10,000 simulations. Each one has a different var based on the random z-score that was generated when it did that specific uh, analysis. So now we need to calculate our Monte Carlo var. So we can say, um, we'll just specify a confidence interval. So let's say 0.95 because that's a common one to use. Now in order to calculate our Monte Carlo var, we need to say equals, so we're going to use the percentile uh, INC function in Excel. And what we need to do is grab this entire range of the 10,000 scenarios. And then we need to specify the um, that it's the fifth percentile one that we're looking at. So one minus the cell I9 was actually where we had our uh, confidence interval. So that gives us the fifth percentile of all of these 10,000 simulations. Now, if I rerun this on my keyboard a handful of times by hitting F9, you'll see that this Monte Carlo var keeps updating, right? And it's always kind of around the similar value, but it, it deviates way less than the actual scenario var because it's taking the 95th percentile of all of the scenario vars. Now, one way we should look at it is like, is let's select all of these 10,000 scenarios and then we'll go to insert uh, histogram and so let me just copy this and go back up to the top here. So I'll paste it right there. Let's take a look. So this is all of the data in all the 10,000 scenarios. And you can see that this is a, approximately a standard normal distribution. You'll see I can keep rerunning this and it'll change shapes and sizes a little bit. And then you'll see that we're always around a Monte Carlo of our about 4,000. So we find that the bottom fifth percentile of this distribution is going to be around this bar here. So this is about our fifth percentile, and this is where our 95% confidence interval var is in a 20 day, 20 day period. But if we change this to about, let's say we want to do a 90% confidence interval, you'll see it move further away from the tail. So now this is at about 3,000. If we look down here in our histogram, we'll see 3,000 is roughly this one. So we moved further into the tail. But then another common VAR is at the 99% confidence interval level. So if we run that one, we'll see our VAR is around 5,600. And then if we go to our histogram, we'll see that th it, this is about the 99th percentile of VAR. So we're moving further into the tail and um, 
anyway, so if you enjoyed this video, this is a part of a three video series on how to calculate VAR in Excel using the parametric method, Monte Carlo method, and historical method. If you'd like to see the other two methods, uh, click on either of these clips here. Thank you.